Plus, it would have only had to cool this and take some things, you know. With Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And we are in Lamb House in Rye, which was built for the mayor James Lamb in 1723. Full description will be in the description. The house is also, bear with me. historical pieces of furniture because that's not very nice. I'll pause you. In the latter 19th century, the famous author Henry James lived at this house. in place. Look at the candlestick telephone. A lovely bureau as well. I've got one like that but without the top bit. I'm not as fine as that I must admit. Mm -hmm. all set up just as if Henry James had not long left the room the telephone room Henry James proudly installed one of Rye's first telephones in this room in 1912 I'll let you read the descriptions Holes to read as I will say my favourite things is the old fireplaces look at the Delftware tiles look they're original Delft tiles, these were all the rage in the uh, 18th century when the um, Delft factories discovered how to do blue and white. It went mad, the world went mad for it. And then some years later, the Chinese managed to copy it and it became a lot cheaper, and the world went even madder for it. Henry James's books. What a beautiful place, I'm very pleased I came to this one. On the reverse of the above painting, a lamb house from the garden. Oh, this has got a lovely garden that we can enjoy as well. Lamb house, right, Henry James House, 1924. Given me by EFB as a birthday present, April the 24th, 1924. Hey, Benson, the house was then in our tenancy. Oh, what a thing to get for your birthday. Oh wow, look at this amazing locks, look. Through to 2018, the National Trust had tenants in the house. So during 
that kind of wood open to the public, but just a couple of rooms on the ground floor. Just a couple of afternoons a week. Hello. Hello. With you in a second. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> and, and so then in January 2017, the last tenants moved out, and they opened, they did some renovation and opened up rooms on the first floor for the first time, because they'd previously been the living quarters of the tenants. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm a vandal. There's somebody else upstairs. Hello. Hello. Next door. Yes, I have. I've got a separate card. Okay. Is it? Well, yes. Is it visiting card? Yes. Thank you very much. Have you been to Lamb House before? No, I think the last time I was in my clothes. So lucky for me. Yes, we probably have these. Lovely room. Look. I've heard about the yeah. The the dining room or the breakfast room, possibly. There are descriptions all over the place as well, so that helps me a lot. His Grace, the Duke of Devonshire. It was great for that lady to be telling those people the description of the place. The Great Britain, that'll be George the First. After they was marked with George one, uh, two, three, and four, five, and six. So Robert Hatcher. My dad would absolutely love this room though because it's also like my like a little mini library as well. It's very nice. <clears throat> this, this room is called the Oak Parlour. Jazz falls to read if you want to read anything. Mm. Ah, King Charles the First. Charles had lost his head. Unfortunately, here we are, it's out into the garden, which we'll be seeing more of soon. Henry James, Marble Bust, by Derwent Wood, RA, to commemorate his birthday in 1913. That's more like my bureau, but mine's um, wider, kind of thing. I prefer old furniture, I don't like modern furniture. A piece of this furniture will not be rocking around and flimsy. Like a new piece will be, no, so if it was to survive that long. I came back here and he had come from off sick the day before. So he's had to cut it somewhere else. Virginia Hall. Yeah, and he's had to cut it somewhere else. Virginia Stephen. <laughs> yeah, luckily, I was... G.K. Chesterton. I had a few days off before I realised that. John Singer Sergeant. Yeah, because that's the danger in Wow. That's why I couldn't come back here. Joseph Conrad. Oh, they've got some really famous people's drawings here. Rudyard Kipling. Sorry, big pardon, sorry. Rudyard Kipling. <coughs> oh, 
lovely room. And I shall save this room till last because it takes us out into the garden. Max Beerbohm. B E E R B O H M. Beerbohm. Mm. I'm going to send it to a beerbohm myself. That will lead you down into the basement, cellar, as I call them. A little teaser of this room which takes us out into the garden, so that will be the last part. But we're now going to go upstairs. And I will focus just one more thing in time on my favourite things, which are clocks. Anyone that knows me knows I love clocks, and this is a beauty. I shall go up the stairs now. Um, I will do this just in one hit, the filming. Uh, it will go on YouTube if it's longer than 35 minutes, which it's very likely to be. I look down into the hallway. And here you have the bathroom in avocado, everyone's favourite colour. The bathroom, or bathroom. are not so lucky that day yeah because basically through down near every war rye has been attacked the big wars like the all the wars with the French oh look this bathroom was installed in the 1950s please do not use oh good god well I should imagine they have to well, we live in this day and age where grown ups are like children you must tell them everything and spell it out and what kind of savage would you use what do you even think of using that? The bombing of right. Ah, oh, brilliant. Glad I noticed this. And you can see right over the Sussex Downs, or to the Sussex Downs. That's a very nice view. I like such pretties. These people come down and then we should go upstairs. Oh, look. British Birmingham 1901 cold. Hot. This house is full of history and stories, so enjoy them. Or fast forward if this isn't your of tea. I find all this kind of thing very interesting so I hope you guys and girls do too. This was open yesterday on Sunday but very very busy so I decided to do that one for a weekday these back in order. That's how, how I found them anyway. Right. Oh wow. Well. Six Rise 1755 Garden Room at Lamb House. Mm. How charming. Up they go. 
don't forget, we've still got the last room downstairs to do, yeah? So that will be great. We'll start with this room, shall we? Which is, no offence to its bliss, it's a little heart, the plainest, and it's got a lot of information in it now. Just pause and read, pause and read. And if they be like me and they can't read, take it to the Scrivener and he'll read it for thee. Or take it to the Vicar and he'll read it for thee. One of my friends is at North Muscombe. Well, she's a vicar at North Muscombe, is where some of my ancestors came from. I made her laugh when I did that accent when I spoke to her on the phone once. And uh, when I spoke to her again, Oh, I didn't know, she had an older person from the village in the room with her and she put me on loudspeaker and the older person from the village was convinced, convinced that I was born in that area. Uh, she, we find it quite funny, she tried to convince him, no, he's never been there in his life. But, ah. She went to me once, oh, you should get into acting, Luke. I went, I couldn't think of anything more horrifying, Vicar. Anything more horrifying than that, if I'm brutally honest with you. We're looking down into the street that we came up. And on these stones here, TPL 1704, TL 1794. Oh, they're both 1794, sorry. The brass doorknob came from the original garden room. Oh, charming. I like these models, I think they're brilliant. Anyone that watched my video of uh, St Mary's Church would have seen the model of St Mary's Church. In there. Oh, how lovely. Oh, I like this. What's that? The paste is the blue and white vase. Shown on the table in the window of the garden room in watercolour by Henry Norton, shattered by the bomb on the 18th of August 1940. Ah, so it's looking like we may not have a garden room. Oh shit, we shall see. La garden room. And I've been good all week and I've not, not, not knocked a single thing down. Those people are saying out there, this house was till fairly soon, fairly recently, lived in. First time I came to Rye, this wasn't even open as a museum. And for several times after I came to Rye, it wasn't open, so this is one I've been looking forward to do. On a quiet today, though, because it was very busy yesterday. And then when I came back about four, it was closed because it was Sunday, obviously. This will be the dressing room in those days when gentlemen had servants or a gentleman's gentleman, they would the gentleman's gentleman would help them dress in a dressing room and the lady had a dressing room in their own as well. And a lot of married couples, not all, but particularly the upper classes, slept in separate rooms. Apart from uh, when they wished to carn carnally copulate with each other. But I wonder afterwards when they'd done. Did they clean up the stainage and retreat back to their own bedrooms, or, or did they spend the night with each other? One can only guess. Excellent. 
Henry James 1912 after charcoal drawing by Sargent in the library at Windsor Castle. There we are. Henry James, by the bust of Henry James. This room and this house is set out exactly just like Henry James has closed the door. And that is Henry James about 1894 to 1896. Oh. I've seen him before. Oh, look, he's got his carpet slippers yeah. on. Fascinating. Oh, wow, this one's most very impressive. This is the King's Room. That's an early Georgian wine glass and wine bottle. Being the Mayor of Rye, he would have had his own stamp on his own bottles because when they were uh, emptied, you sent them back and had them refilled. Glass bottles are expensive. George I. Sir Godfrey Kellen, uh, Keller, sorry. I think I may have to return to the opticians sooner or later. Lamb House is named after its first resident, James and Martha Lamb, who commissioned the house in about 1723. James Lamb was originally customs man and wine merchant. The Lambs had only lived in the house for a few years when they unexpectedly played host to an important visitor. A storm had driven King George I's yacht ashore at Camber Sands, and Lamb House was thought to be the most comfortable local accommodation. Usually a royal visit would have been welcomed with great excitement. However, Martha was nine months pregnant and due to give birth any day. The baby arrived that night and was named George after the king. The king remained in Rye for four nights and agreed to be the baby's godfather, gifting him a hundred guineas and a letter of silver. A gift of a hundred guineas and a later and later a silver gilt bow as a christening present. Do you know that? It's really crazy. It felt like someone pulled the string on my bag. The strap on my bag. Ah, look, embroideries. And uh, in really medieval to Victorian times, young ladies, part of their learning was learning how to sew and embroider. And they were judged on how well they could do it. The gift of his majesty is King George to his godson, George Lamb, Anno Domini 1724. I think that is. Wow. Ah, I'm glad I actually, because the descriptions, what I normally do is film them for you guys, and then when I'm watching the video back myself to edit and check it's all okay, I normally read them then, but I'm glad I read that one. So this is the King's Room because King George I stayed here. More, <clears throat> more Delft tiles. And that blue thing there is to measure the moisture and dampness, I believe. They also sometimes put, if you see a bit of tape stuck on the wall, white tape, don't pull it off. It's to uh, check if the walls are subsiding or moving to, or to see if a crack has become any worse than it was. I'm no expert, but I was just told this by a curator once. foreign language and order I couldn't. Bar not an early barometer. These are very expensive in their day. And uh, living by the sea comes somewhat of a, ne a necessity. Wow, look, a lovely view. Am I waking up? So just to think that King George I slept in this room and woke up and would have looked out of this window. And we're walking on the very floorboards that King George I would have walked on. G. 
which is interesting and eerie. And this is a gentleman's, believe it or not, nightgown. Men pyjamas didn't exist back then, and this is what men wore. Yes, even with lace. The richer you are, the more embroidered and richer your clothing would have been. The town of Rye. See? Ah, brilliant. This is exactly what I say. The sea came right in up to the town. And this is... Town of Rye. French pirates. This is... Ah, this is the, 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 the attack on Rye, the French pirates. 1420. Can't complain because we did the same thing to them. A coffer. Oh, this is a puzzle jug. Um, they like these. They were a game in those days. You'd fill it up with drink. Then you'd have to put your fingers over certain of the holes and try to drink out of one of them. And this would have been passed around to everyone. Hence, while the life expectancy for many people was probably about 40 years old. And that is, come drink us all and try your... Oh, I can't, because it's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not touching it. I've seen these in the Antiques Roadshow. They cleaned one out once and filled it with water and got the uh, experts to try and drink out of it. it. That was funny. Most of them ended up with wet ties and suits. But yeah, a lovely place. I'm enjoying this one, actually. This is a first for me and you all. I've never been to Lamb House. Oh, the lady out there filming. Not film the old last blesser. His Majesty King George the First, who hated Britain and did not like the English very much, if the truth to be told. He spoke fluent German and refused to learn English. The first royal of the Georgian line to speak fluent English and be born in England was King George the First, uh, King George the Third. The son of the son of King George the First, King George the Second, was the, I think, was the grandfather of George the Third. And um, he outlived his own son. Hence while well, when he died, George the Third came to the throne instead of his father. Um, Poor mad King George, we all know what happened there. Uh, we're led to understand that many Catholic properties got involved. Yeah. So long and short of it is, we ended up in a plot big enough for this lovely house and that beautiful, mm -hmm. as you think, size of the world. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. How are you? Okay. You will pass. Green parlour. <laughs> those two young men are pictured there because Henry would have had those pictures on his wall. Oh, and so, he sorry, was like a, a surrogate uncle to young, talented writers, and he would be a very encouraging mentor to them. And ah. Jonathan Sturgis and Hugh Walpole fell into that. Ah. Jonathan Sturgis yeah. and Hugh Walpole went on to be not only a regular visitor when Henry was here, but also when Fred Benson was here too. Mm. I wish I could. I wish I could. But this would have been very well. 
who would have sat here timely. And by this time, Henry James was dictating all the longer pieces of work. And he paced from window to window, fistful of notes in hand. But he thought it was going to be the most tedious thing for someone to type. Um, so he always wanted to have something to do for the lulls. So Mary would have her knitting or her crochet book on the go. Um, and you know, I did start off the knitting because I thought, how long would it be to have some knitting? But you know, certain people volunteering you were very sniffy about the knitting that had been started and now have a very complicated pattern that I would never dare try and continue. <laughs> so it's worked well, it's kept my school yes. not very proficient. <laughs> <clears throat> Both of my grandmothers could knit, so that's a, that's particularly my mum's mum, Ingrid, she was very good at crochet. And he was still bearded when he first came to ride. Whether he was having a little midlife crisis, I don't know, but he did lose all the facial hair whilst he was here. And that, we're told, because I hate that one, I don't think it does any justice at all. I don't know if you saw the portrait down in the dining room above the fireplace. That's beautiful. <coughs> That's the fireplace so that we all went and saw. artist produced would have been a lot better than that. Yes. But the one downstairs is just a copy of the original, which was by Johnson and so on. And you'll see mm -hmm. in the dressing room, there's loads of sketches in the dressing room, just red orcs. But that's rather lovely because it was a group of Henry's friends who persuaded Johnson and Sergeant to do that portrait. Henry James in Dentra Luck. This is amazing. The history in, in this house is just, just well, for someone like me that loves history. As you can get. Oh, there you are, see. Mm -hmm. And that's by um, those all Beautiful look. That's stunning. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, you can see that Henry James has made notes and scribbled. This is brilliant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at least, you know, the high street is still, you know, oh, it's lots, 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 yeah. lots of empty shops. No, 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 no. That's true, what the ladies are saying. Yeah, I'll just show you the type right up. In my lifetime, from a small mm. town into a tourist resort. I always have a tourist on this now, but it's, it, it is now just a tourist resort. Interestingly, you're talking about the late 60s into the early 70s. And of course the little rose garden with the pond. Thanks for the description. Thank you, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, that was a brilliant history lesson for that lady, wasn't it? This is uh, obviously where we can't go. But in heaven, there'll be no algebra, no learning dates on names, but only playing golden harps and reading Henry James. <laughs> I like that. It's a meme of that. When our phone decides to cooperate with us, there they are. I love technology, but it can also be the bane of your life sometimes. Yeah, that's interesting. That's obviously where other rooms are. Maybe they've not restored them yet or um, changed them. 
for the museum. I turned them into a museum, I mean. Now I go back downstairs and we shall enjoy this last little room I said about and go into the garden. A lot. This is the dining room. I'll give you the description first. Wow, 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 wow. And then show you all the other stuff. Well, all the amazing stuff, rather. This will be, probably be about an hour or just under this one, so not bad. Alright, pause to read, as I say. Treasures. Somewhat um, high, it's a gaudy for my taste, but that's the Victorians for you. The Georgians tended towards um, a simple elegance, but the, the Victorians basically took simple elegance, screwed it up, and threw it away. That's why, if you see a Georgian mental piece compared to a Victorian one, the, the level of clutter on the Victorian one compared to the Georgian is quite phenomenal. They liked a lot of things, did the Victorians. All packed in together. Consul Albert. That's in there. See how I'll count. Alberto. Bevilla. Kulazis. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at that, but yeah. There we are. Oh, that's a tea caddy. And they were locked in those days because tea was very valuable and so servants used to steal it. So when the mistress saw them, it was usually the mistress that did the tea. There was a whole ritual around tea drinking, the English pastime. This was in its making days, and uh, the servant would bring the tea caddy. The mistress would have the key probably on something called a chatelaine which she wore about her waist, which was the keys to the house and uh, the keys to everything that it all, one, it kept the servants little thieving mitts, bless them, off of it and two, those keys showed the status of the woman the man was the master that worked and provided and the woman was the mistress that ran the house and made sure everything ran perfectly preferably they would try to treat their servants are okay because it, even in those days if you treated people too badly they would just leave so but some some servants weren't treated well not at all it's very impressive more delft tiles look these are beautiful these there's a different scene oh um look at this one here on if anyone that's watched scrooge that delft tile on scrooge is the same one as this, and in Scrooge, the man's club comes to life, that man's head turns and shows the ghost of Jacob Marley. Oh, that's brilliant, I'm interested in that. Let's give you a little whiz of all of these, because each is a different scene. These would have been very expensive in their day. Delftware, if you get a genuine piece of it, it will be chipped and cracked all along the edges. If it's not, it's fake. There was also a little pottery in Bow for a certain time in the 18th century in London as well, Bow Pottery. And if you ever get a piece of Bow Pottery, well, you're quits in, basically, as well as owning a lovely, lovely antique. That's a beautiful box. I like that. That's a decantor, where the, uh, or a tantor, you know, like a tantalus, just a high-grade one. You'd lock your your port and your wine and your brandy away. Also from the thieving hands of the servants. Oh, this is lovely. Look, Rye. How charming. Reflections of the bane of my life with filming. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. That's lovely. So yeah, we'll go into the garden now. Have a walk around there. Give you one little zoom around of this lovely dining room. Oh, 
I'll probably add um, photos of my guidebook on Facebook and where I can do that <clears throat> along with this because the information in it is, is very, very detailed. Very detailed indeed. All right, where should we go first, guys and girls? Should we go left? I am like so well, Joe. You get me. I'd very much like to live here. I'm extremely jealous. I want this house. I need this house. I want it. I need it desperately, desperately. What a lovely place. Perfect, perfect place for a writer because the tranquility and the peace is perfect. Oh. You know, you can literally feel the peace here. Oh, yeah. Look at me getting all nostalgic and and stuff. There is Lamb House, which we'll see more of that when we go out. It's like a little maze that winds around and leads us into other parts. I just knew this would be the vegetable garden that's hidden out the way. A kitchen garden, a very traditional kitchen garden too. Parsnips, turnips. Oh, the earwig's friend. Ooh. The old school gardeners. And I know this from my granddad Mark, my great granddad Tom. He was a gardener, a chauffeur. And uh, he used to put a wooden stick with a clay pot on it, stuffed with straw inside, that you'd pour a little beer, a bit of beer onto the straw. And the earwigs, rather than going into these lovely flowers, would go into that. And in the morning, they would go in there. Or if you had a nice fire going, they would go on that. Very cruel, I know, but there we are. Beetroot. Parsnips. Carrots. Celeriac. Oh, God, I hate celeriac. Disgusting. I had that given to me once in rye. Well, I am in rye, but yeah, you know what I mean. I didn't like it. As the woman from the Carry On film says, I tried it once and didn't like it. Well, this garden just goes on and on and on. It's, it looks quite small from the outside, but this is very impressive. It's a shame the garden room was destroyed, I must admit. I wonder where it was. This ain't the garden room, is it? Oh, what's here? Please do not enter. The garden. Yeah, it probably is the largest open space other than the graveyard. I should imagine that's quite a size as well. Pause to read. If you've missed that, rewind it back. It requires some effort, my dears, but there we are. Oh, this is wunderbar. I could sit there and I thought they was calling me then. I thought I haven't gone somewhere where I'm not allowed to go, am I? You could sit, put a chair here and sit and have a nice cup of tea or a drink and a nice soothing cigarette. Ah, oh, don't need to bring a chair out. They thought of that already. Oh, what a lovely view. Oh, isn't that lovely? And that lovely flow? And that lovely vibe? That's beautiful. Lamb House viewed from the garden. Um, I can't remember what when it was. It would have been the third, maybe fourth time I came to Rye. Uh, there was a lot of renovations going on in the house. And I will be honest with you, I've walked past it so many times, even before it became a museum, which was in recent times, I know, and never knew any of the history of it, never really gave it a second glance, other than to photograph it and think, oh, what a lovely house. And it's only when I started getting into all my history stuff, and particularly on my last holiday, I stopped and started reading plaques and 
googling things as well and found out about Henry James and about the mayor of Rowe who this house was built for and the other uh, authors and interesting historical characters that are here as well Lovely place. It's very well looked after, isn't it, as well? Nice. I like a nice garden like this. You could really sit and uh, relax here. Oops. Well, for the little it costs to get in here, you certainly get your money's worth, don't you? It's lovely. Really nice. Gardeners are putting some plants in there in. Weeding, tidying, planting. Devil's pokers. Um, they are lovely, I will grant you. They are very, very nice, but they are notoriously difficult to get rid of. And this is the courtyard tea room. Toilet. Very nice. Shan't go into the uh, tea room, I think it's closed anyway. But yeah. The little alcove in the dining room with all the silverware and the fancy stuff, that's what we're looking at we're looking on to now. We looked out onto this and now we're looking into it. This would be my little area where I set like that. It's like a little uh, ward kitchen garden kind of thing, but a secret garden. It's very nice. Yeah, there you are. Fusion, look. Everything's flowering very late this year as well. The weather has uh, certainly had a big effect. In, go back out and show you the front of the house. Give them my feet a very good wipe, of course. Anyone that comes here, please make sure you do the same. People do forget sometimes, but I had it drummed into me by my parents, and particularly my nan. Wipe your feet. Where your best china wear would have been kept in there, locked away, and a plate bucket. Kept near a fire or somewhere warm, kept the plates warm, carried in by the servants, ready to dish up. And there's a lot of people. It didn't um, bring in meals individually dished up in those days. It would be in tureens and things like that. And we have here... Shall I dare and touch it? The Times. December the 23rd, 1930. Well, I must say, I've really, really enjoyed this one. It's a lovely place. That's just the toilet. There we are. Thank you. 
William Donaldson. Margate. I'll research him. Anyone <coughs> knows me knows I love clocks. Rupert Brooke. And <coughs> Edmund Goose. <coughs> Sorry, Goss, C O G O S S E. And that is what you call a lock, isn't it? That one. and gentlemen concludes more or less other than a few things I wish to show you Henry James writer lived here bear with me Henry James writer sorry Henry James author lived here 1898 to 1916 Walking backwards on cobbles is not my most sensible decision I've ever taken, I must admit. Uh, da, 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 da. My eyesight's very poor, you know. Eight pounds to get in. In a garden house on this site, destroyed in an air raid on, our, on the 18th of August 1914, Henry James wrote many of his novels. So yeah, they did destroy it and stinkers. That looked really nice as well. I bet he was fuming, I know I would have been. Schweinhund, Schweinsteiger, Seifikenfotz. Well, I don't I suppose a gentleman would have used the word Seifikenfotz, but probably was something like Damn Hans, Jerry Swines, and things like that. In Lamb House lived E.F. Benson. From 1919 to 1940, and A.C. Benson from 1922 to 25, brothers and writers, and they they took the house, they inherited the house from James Lamb. Yeah, that's Lamb House for you. That's Lamb House. I hope you all found that one interesting, guys and girls. If you did. Please give it a like and a share. Thanks very much for watching. And this is the Church of St. Mary's in Rye, which we've already seen. But I'm going to go and get some photos from there in a minute. So take care all, and I shall see you all soon. And you're on Lamb House, what we actually came here for. Take care all. <laughs>